In this video, we're going to look at solving some proportions, and in this video, I'm really going to focus on the algebraic side of solving more difficult proportions. I have another video on proportions that really focuses on the application of proportions and some of the types of story problems that you're going to see with proportions, so if that's what you need, I would um, check out the other video. But sometimes in books, you'll get problems that are proportions that are asking you to solve um, that don't have any context with them. Say you get something like 3x plus 7 over 10 equals negative x minus 2 over 7. Okay? So this is an example of a proportion, but there's no story problem or application with it. I just want to quickly review how to do a problem like this. Um, let me move this up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to move it over here for a second. So just to review, a proportion is an equation that says a ratio equals a ratio or a rate equals a rate. Um, ratios and rates are going to be expressed as fractions or quotients. So this equation, I know this equation here is a proportion because it's a fraction equals a fraction. And when you're solving proportions, you're going to use a property that's going to make this a lot easier. Um, so that looks like this. Okay, some people call it the cross product property. So we have A is to B as C is to D. So this is a really bare bones example of a, what a proportion would look like. A fraction equals a fraction. When we have something like this and we want to solve it, we're going to use something called the cross product property. So to show what that looks like, I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by b times d. All right, so why would I do that? Well, I want to do that because I'm going to cancel this b with this b and this d with this d, and that's going to get rid of the fractions. If you have a proportion, you're going to have fractions because that's sort of the definition of a proportion. But if I multiply both sides by bd, I get a times d. That's what I have left over here, and I'm just writing them in alphabetical order there. And C times B, which I'll write as B times C for alphabetical order. So what did I just find there? Well, what this says, if I start with this proportion, then A times D is always going to be equal to B times C. In other words, the product of this diagonal, A times D, is always going to equal the product of this diagonal, B times C. And we can see that looking at some easy proportion like certainly we know one half equals five tenths right so that's a proportion uh, and certainly two times five equals one times ten right that's always going to be that way let's try another one let's see two thirds equals if i multiply the two by seven i get fourteen if i multiply the three by seven i get twenty one so fourteen twenty first equals two thirds let's check the cross product here Right, 2 times 21 is 42, and 3 times 14 is 42. All right, so those are always going to be equal to each other. That's what, what this property says. So we can use that property to do a problem like this to solve for x. So we know that 10 times that numerator, negative x minus 2, is going to equal 3x plus 7 times 7. So what we need to be careful with here is that we're multiplying this entire numerator by 7. So we need to use parentheses. So I'll write it without parentheses first. If I had said, well, 3x plus 7 times 7 equals, okay, that that's not true because here I'm only multiplying the 7 by the 7. I need to take this entire numerator times 7, and I need to take 10 times that entire numerator. So 10 times the whole thing negative x minus 2. So that's really important. If you have more than one term in your numerator or your denominator, when you do this cross product property, make sure you put that in parentheses. That's a, a common mistake. So from here it should be pretty easy to solve, hopefully. We're going to distribute that 7 and we're going to distribute this 10. Let's see what we get. 21x plus 49 equals negative 10x minus 20. And there's multiple ways to solve this, but I'll just go ahead and add 10x to both sides. And that will give us 31x. I have a feeling this one's not going to come out pretty. What do you think? Looks like it's got fractions written all over it. Let's see. Minus 49 from both sides. And then I'll write my answer over here, keep going over here. 
what do we got? 31x equals negative 69. Divide both sides by 31. And we could leave it as an improper fraction. That doesn't look like it's going to reduce because 31 is prime. Or we could write it as a mixed number, which would be 2. 31 goes into 69 twice, would be 62. Uh, so 7 left over? No. Yeah, 7 left over, so 7 of 31. Gross. All right, so x equals negative 2 and 7 31sts. That's the answer to this value of x right here. So if you wanted to check it, you could plug that back in for x and see that those come out the same. That doesn't look like too fun of a problem to check. All right, let's try one more of these, and maybe you could uh, stop the video and try it on your own and then start it and see how you do. Oh, let's get rid of this and this, and we'll leave this property up here. All right, let's try something sort of the same. How about um, 5 over 12 minus x equals, um, actually, let's do 5 plus x over 12 minus x equals um, 3 fourths. Interesting. Okay, so what value of x could I put in here to make this fraction come out to be 3 fourths? So if you want to give it a try, pause it, use this property here, cross multiply and solve it, and should be good to go. Maybe this one we'll be able to check. Okay, so I am going to start by taking um, this times this. So that's going to give me, remember I need to use parentheses, 5 plus x times 4. And you could put the 4 in front of the parentheses if you want. A lot of people like to do that. That's fine. That's just the commutative property if you put the 4 in front, and that's certainly legal. And then I'm going to take this whole thing, 12 minus x times 3. Again, you could put the 3 in front if you want. And so I'm going to distribute here and get 20 plus 4x equals 36 minus 3x. Now I need to get my x's on the same side. So you could either add 3x or you could minus this 4x, but I'm going to add 3x because that keeps my x term positive. So I get 20 plus 7x equals 36. This is going to come out fraction-y too, huh? So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides and write my answer over here. So we get 7x equals 16. Divide both sides by 7. And we get x equals 2 and 2 sevenths. Wow. Okay. So let's, um, let's check this one. I might be asking for trouble here, but let's check it and see what happens. Okay, so supposedly if I put this in for x, so 5 plus x, so I would have... Um, 5 plus 2 and 2 sevenths over 12 minus x minus 2 and 2 sevenths. That's supposed to come out to be 3 fourths. Well, let's give it a try. All right, so let's see. 5 plus 2 and 2 sevenths would be 7 and 2 sevenths. I'm going to run out of room here, I bet. Um, oh, I got room up there. Let's go up here. Hopefully this isn't too messy. Okay, so we have 7 and 2 sevenths over, let's see, 12 take away 2 would be 10, and take away 2 more sevenths would be 9 and 5 sevenths. 9 and 5 sevenths. Are you catching that? 12 take away 2 is 10, but you have to take away 2 more sevenths. So it's going to be 9 and 5 sevenths, because 2 sevenths and 5 sevenths make 7 sevenths. All right, so you could do this with your calculator. A lot of calculators have fraction buttons now. But uh, I'm just going to be old-fashioned here and, and go ahead and do this out. So I'm going to change both of these into improper fractions. So 7 times 7 is 49 plus 2 is 51. So my numerator is 51 sevenths. And 9 times 7 is 63 plus 5 is 68. So that gives me 68 sevenths. So to divide fractions, I am going to um, take 
the bottom fraction and flip it over and multiply. Remember, multiply by the reciprocal. Oh boy. Okay, so these sevens cancel. And I am left with 51 over 68. And supposedly that's supposed to be equal to 3 fourths. Well, you could take 51 divided by 68 on your calculator and see that it's um, see that it is 0.75. This is a tough one to reduce. A lot of people probably wouldn't see this, but 17 actually goes into both these numbers. So if you divide the top and bottom by 17, um, you do end up with 3 fourths. But like I said, maybe if you don't see that, um, you could do 51 punch into your calculator 51 divided by 68 and it will say 0 0.75 which is the same as 3 fourths but you know if you were going to use your calculator you might as well have used it from here <laughs> and punch that in if you have a fraction button punch in 7 and 2 7 divided by 9 and 5 7 and it should say 0.75 or 3 fourths but anyway it does work all right we checked it out the value of x that makes this equation true is 2 and 2 7 believe it or not so this is your friend right here this property whenever you have a proportion you can take the product uh, the cross product times the cross product make sure you have a proportion when you're using this rule you can't use this rule in any other situation right I've seen students use this rule when they have like uh, you know two-thirds plus one-fourth and then they like multiply across here right you can't do that you can't you can only do it if there's an equal sign between the two fractions don't be using this cross product property um, all over the place it's very very specific it's an equation where a fraction equals a fraction if you use it in that context it will be your friend and uh, make these problems very quick to solve.